A day in New York. There's a breath of spring in the air and a promise of sunny days to come. A girl in the crowd catches our attention. To some, she is just a pretty girl with a continental touch to her dress. But to the Swedish feminine eye, the color combination and material in the skirt are typically Ripsa Sweden. But to tell you more about this, we have to go to a village southwest of Stockholm. in Sörmland, Sweden. The village is widely spread out, but has in all 250 inhabitants. In this part of the country, the main source of income is forestry, farming, and weaving. It has a church which dates back to the 12th century. Perhaps the Swedish people know of it, because in the vault under the church lie the remains of the notorious Ritza pirate, Gustav Adolf Schütte, who was beheaded and laid to rest there, his head between his legs, as was the tradition of the Dark Ages. Ripsa also has a manor house, Edidi, which has changed hands only twice since the 13th century. This is the residence of Professor Harry von Eckermann, noted geologist of the Royal Academy of Science. When not working in his laboratory on the premises, the professor likes to relax with his favorite pet, a tame deer named Hansi. on the map, artistically speaking, is its textiles. <laughs> this is where most of the activity in Ripsa takes place, the main building of Ripsa textiles where all the thinking is done. The daughter of the house, Margareta, is home for the weekend after busy days in Stockholm, where she studies fashion. She is the third generation in the fashion business. Her great-grandmother weaves, her mother weaves, and she weaves. Her father, Eric von Eckermann, has introduced the latest methods of modern forestry to Ripsa in an effort to rationalize and simplify work in the forests around. Her mother, Ebba von Eckermann, started this offbeat activity of employing one-fifth of Ripsa's population in full or part-time jobs in the hand-loom textile industry. This is the period when next season's collection has to be gone through with the Danish designer Lars Hillingsø. Colors and styles are gone through with extreme care. After discussing sketches, comparing yarn for color and texture, the material is draped and styled, each detail receiving the utmost attention so as to get the perfect blending of model, fabric, and color. But production still continues for the current season's orders, and these garments have to be checked, too.
But for Erbe von Eckermann, the first step towards a new collection is selecting the colors. This is perhaps also the most vital part of making a collection a success. Naturally, fashion colors influence a little too, but everything definitely has an individual touch. Each pattern comes in several color combinations. are composed on a small test loom, and if met with her approval, they go into production on one of the full-scale looms in the weaving studio, which was once a stable for carriage horses in the olden days. Everything is arranged to fit the requirements of a home industry. Here, skilled women from Ripster Village, as well as students of this art handicraft, meet in mutual interests. yarn are wound into big rolls, which in turn are transferred to the smaller bobbins. Later, the bobbins will go into the shuttles, which the weaver sends through the warp. studio is usually a busy place, but still the peaceful activity of weaving reflects itself in the faces of the weavers, and this atmosphere, together with the rhythm of the shuttles going back and forth, quickly affects the visitor, who somehow leaves his more worldly worries on the threshold and stands fascinated, watching an art handicraft which is as old as human life. One of the first steps towards weaving is setting up a warp. The warp has to be properly stretched and absolutely untangled. When completely rolled, it will be lifted over to a loom.
A clever weaver can weave approximately 12 to 15 yards a day. Naturally, this depends on how complex the pattern is. Many threads have gone into this fabric since we first saw the pattern come to life under Ebba von Eckermann's hands. The last stage of work in the weaving studio is to check the fabric for any faults in threads or in weaving. This is done by hand, inch by inch. The next step is the cutting. This is done at one of the houses in the village, and it keeps two people fully occupied. After the cutting, the fabric and everything required for the sewing, pockets, zippers, thread, and so forth, are packed for destination. Other houses in Ripsa. The parcels are collected by Gulli Peterson, who is Ebba von Eckermann's right hand. The garments that are to be sewn by housewives who live on faraway farms are taken by bus that goes once a day. The ones that are located nearer, she takes herself and delivers them by car, at the same time fetching any completed orders. She is a welcome visitor in the Ripsa houses. In Mrs. Isakson's house, there is a special workroom beside the kitchen, which has also become the favorite playroom for her two children. Gulli Peterson brings her more green material, but this time for a different size. Mrs. Isaacson averages one skirt a day, so tomorrow Gulli Peterson will be back to fetch the finished garments from the material that she left today. In another house, Eric Oskarsson has just come back from a day's hard work in the forest. His daughter has finished her homework, and his wife has just completed another skirt. This time the fabric is new to him, and he always likes to see a new color around the house. Ebba von Eckermann looks over every item that leaves Ripsa Textiles. Sometimes it strikes her how strange it all is. She started this activity 15 years ago, and it became what it is today, and all on the suggestion of the village switchboard operator, who knew how many women could weave in the village, and thought that Ebba von Eckermann was very definitely the person to organize it. And now Ripsa Textiles export to some of the most exclusive stores in Europe and in the United States. But perhaps the most acid test in finding out whether one's idea back at the test loom turned out to be a success or not is seeing the finished garment on a mannequin. Small adjustments and rehearsals are necessary for a coming show. Premier, and they liked it. The first audience this time was a very international one. Members of the diplomatic corps in Stockholm are spectators at an informal showing in the small showroom. 
are shown in suitable surroundings. While spectators sip hot glug wine, the traditional drink on a winter's day in Sweden. admired before taking a look at the hand-loomed evening and hostess dresses. Now you know why we suddenly thought that we recognized a little bit of Sweden in a skirt walking down a street in a country far away from home.